السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome to a live program from Gems of the Heart where we look into the things that purify our hearts from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It's a duty upon each and every one of us and we need to really take the matter very serious This life is very short and we have a short period of time to purify our heart and to make this heart in such a sound and good position so that we would enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear in the Quran that no one will enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless they have a sound heart anyone that has the smallest impurity or traces of impurity in the heart that traces of impurity would prevent the person from entering Jannah till it's clean and purified that might sound like a difficult thing a person would say how would we know that our hearts are purified the matter is not difficult by the will of Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and if he ordered us to do something then he subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for us to know and to implement what we need to do to purify our hearts it's basically by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone by having the sincerity and the love of Allah and the fear of Allah and to be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to repent to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all sins because sins causes this impurity to our hearts and the most important thing and the foundation of all goodness is to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone the one impurity and filth that if it's present in the heart that person if he dies with it after the truth has been presented to that person he would never enter Jannah it's the unforgivable sin whatsoever and that is the shirk to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why we have to see things in this life from that perspective purification versus non-purification it's all the tawheed and the shirk and the implications of the tawheed the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify and to adorn the hearts and the worst filth whatsoever is to associate partners with Allah and to invent lies about Allah and to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there are two parts to it one part is to have the knowledge of how to purify our hearts and then what is left is for us to implement this in our life to have the patience to fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is basically what we're doing here inshallah ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept how to purify our hearts and we're still with the first pillar of al-iman the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the most important that makes everything else easy in our life by the will of Allah and one of which we're talking about the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in this episode inshallah ta'ala instead of mentioning a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we'll talk about some of the attributes of Allah mentioned in a particular verse that is verse number 26 in surah al-imran but before we get to that inshallah ta'ala I would like to remind the viewers of uh, the question from last episode and we still have the entire episode inshallah ta'ala for you to share uh, with us your answers or to give us a phone call and last week we were talking about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-hafiz and the question was uh, mention a dua uh, in which the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would seek protection uh, from, al for, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection a dua that is basically you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection from the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, something that is authentic it doesn't have to be a particular dua but anything authentic from the Prophet sallam, that we can say to seek protection uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, please try your best inshallah and uh, we, we can have your comments also in the Facebook page and we'll read that inshallah ta'ala for you so going back again to uh, the purification of the heart with some of the attributes of Allah uh, the verse inshallah ta'ala that we will talk about inshallah ta'ala in this episode is the verse in surah Ali Imran uh, which is verse number 26 verse number 26 from surah Ali Imran and this is something that uh, we can really reflect upon where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says in it قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ 
So what this verse mean? It roughly means that say, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, قل اللهم مالك الملك. O Allah, مالك الملك, the owner of all sovereignty, the king of all kings, the one that has the sovereignty of the heavens and earth. تؤتي الملك من تشاء. You give sovereignty to whoever you will. وتنزع الملك من من تشاء. And you take away sovereignty from whoever you will. وتعز من تشاء. And you give might and honor and dignity and power to whoever you will. وتذل من تشاء. And you humble and you humiliate whoever you will. بيدك الخير in your hands are all types and means of goodness. إنك على كل شيء قدير. Indeed, you are able to do all things. Uh, whenever we hear these types of verses, it's all about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's really one of the greatest uh, means to purify our hearts. We can never do that unless we recite the words of Allah, the Quran. This is the mean of purification of our soul and our hearts, to increase our iman, to act according to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his names and attributes, to worship him alone. Uh, how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to uh, live our life as true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stories in the Quran that talks about nations and how the messengers were sent and people split into two groups, the believers versus the disbelievers and what happened to the believers and what type of struggle and uh, trials that they faced and what did the disbelievers do whenever the truth is presented to them and what's the outcome is for who of course for the believers and it talks about the hereafter and the Jannah and the Hawfire all of that is, is based on these meanings and what was present in the hearts of the believers that kept them strong and able to face all kinds of trials on the face of earth is the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala following the ways of the messengers alayhim salam so taking a verse like this as an example that maybe this can revive in our hearts how to be more attached to the book of Allah. This is what we need to seek the source. This is the source of guidance for all of us. So when, we, when we're reciting the Quran, we need to reflect upon this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this verse some of the attributes of Allah and uh, showing the humbleness of the human beings. Malik al-mulk. Malik al-mulk. Al-mulk is sovereignty. Any sovereignty, anybody that has any form of sovereignty on the face of earth, any form of authority. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. And he is the owner of all things and he has the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. No one can do anything except by the permission of Allah. And that's something, this meaning, if we really understand it well, our life would totally be different. Uh, our life would be truly according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And this is how the hearts become purified. A believer would not fear other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would find and see things in the right perspective. Human beings are weak. Human beings are deficient. Human beings, they do not have the full and the absolute ownership of anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. When we look into sins and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why many people, they turn away from the deen of Allah, one of the reasons is they are afraid of others. The pressure of other human beings. The fear for their life, for their uh, deficiency in matters of wealth or uh, matters of fun or desires in this life or whatever reasons that people do to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the believers they understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things then things will be totally different so if you're seeking any goodness who's the owner of that goodness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're seeking to fulfill your desires who's the one that has the ownership of this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he will Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would make you fulfill your desire in the proper way. And the outcome of it would be a great thing and a good thing. And that evil itself does not exist on the face of earth except by the permission of Allah. How can that be? This is something that also we have to have the sound belief in matters of the qadr of Allah. The owner of all things, right? if he's the creator of the heavens and earth, nothing will be allowed to happen under the sovereignty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without his permission. Otherwise, that's a deficiency. And deficiency cannot be attributed to the creator of the heavens and the earth. So when we see the actions of the evildoers, or those who say bad things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or about the deen of Islam and so on, don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not aware of what they're doing. 
they are doing whatever they're doing and saying whatever they're saying and it's all by the permission of Allah not the religious permission there are two types of uh, will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and permission from Allah there is the religious permission this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for the believers to do and what he hates for them to do and there is just basically the universal things that happens on the face of earth for great wisdom why they are being left to do and to say whatever they want to say to increase them in sins if they don't repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to elevate the believers when they face these types of difficulties and they're still steadfast on the truth and they hold fast to it when the hearts become more purified when they see this and they see that this is makhluk this is a creation of Allah that is weak that he cannot help his own self let along help others or cause harm to others and that is related to what we said before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector because he is the owner of all things he is Malik al-Mulk subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why when the issue of al-Mulk and sovereignty and uh, authority it uh, occupies uh, you know, the, our life in many ways and form because those who are in charge of us right, they control or they have some form of control in our lives and laws and regulations and so on but for the believers they understand that they are nothing but what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permit for them to happen for a great wisdom and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of that تُؤْتِي الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ you give the mulk or the sovereignty to whoever you will O Allah so when someone is in charge whether it's a husband in his household or a father whether it's the head of a state right it's been given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes a person might take the means and fight for it or whatever there is but at the end is all part of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's given to whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will he's the one that gives this whether it's to test the people to test the individual if people are good and, and obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them someone that would help them to be obedient and righteous and so on if the people are wicked and committing sins and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them someone to make them continue to do that as a, as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them in Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma bi'anfusihim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the situation of the people till they change themselves when the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they were obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their leaders were Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhu and when people changed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed their situation right so and this is what the meaning of of the verse that if person if a person changes his obedience to Allah to become sinful life and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change for that person whatever the means of goodness and guidance and goodness of this life to the opposite of that and if people or an, an individual changes the state of disobedience to Allah to be in the state of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change for the person then the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the favors of Allah and the goodness of this life and in the hereafter and so on person might say but disbelievers they disbelieve and they do all kinds of things and they have so much of the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on them on the face of earth well we have to really clarify and protect ourselves from being deceived what is goodness of this life is it disbelief that leads to the hereafter does it lead to destruction or leads to what is goodness so this is a point that we have to really reflect upon as we see that uh, you know going to the, uh, the the subject that we're talking about and and having the 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 wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the book of Allah uh, this is something that we need to reflect upon as you see that we are live on in the Facebook and and your comments and your uh, answers to the questions of course inshallah from last episode this is something that we need to reflect upon too inshallah ta'ala so please inshallah ta'ala pay attention to that so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that has the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth so look at things in the right perspective whoever has this knowledge he would have the peace of mind he will be able to know exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him we we are in need to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes to purify our hearts with this so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives the sovereignty to whoever he wills and you take it away from whoever you will this is what the verse says so if people are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for them and when people try to take matters in their own hands 
with disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they don't receive anything but more miseries on the face of earth. That's why we as Muslims were ordered to be obedient to Allah and to follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ uh, وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ That you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one that give izza, to give honor, dignity, to give, to give might and power to whoever you will, because the power and might is all owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have the ability to, to move your arm, who's the one that gave you this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we reflect upon this, the more we are really fulfilling the purpose of our life. That the purpose of our life is to truly humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in the true way and form. So that's why it's important that we uh, have these means of izza and honor and dignity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. The same thing when it comes to powers in this life, the major power in this life. People, those who have power, sometimes those who are weak and oppressed, they have this uh, fear in them, or they would be terrified by the power that other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have. But when they read the Quran, and they see that everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one that gives the honor to whoever he wills. And he's the one that humiliates whoever he wills. And the honor and the humiliation, again, is according to the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the sins and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Al-Hasan al-Busri rahimahullah, he said a beautiful statement that uh, Allah which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuses but to humiliate the one that disobeys him. Those who are sinners and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are humiliated on the face of earth. Even if they look differently uh, within their own selves, they have uh, no honor and dignity whatsoever. They have no honor and dignity whatsoever. They're always humiliated when it comes to their desires. They become so much attached to their desires in this life that it becomes a form of humiliation for them. But the real honored individual on the face of earth is the one that is a true worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he seeks this honor and dignity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many verses in the Quran that talks about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Aziz. Al-Aziz means the Almighty, the one that nobody can defeat him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that this power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this attribute, he gives whoever he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala this power. That's why we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have the power to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's why one of the great uh, ways to attain this power is to say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Uh, when we say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah, there's no might, there's no power except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives the believers strength. See how the relationship here that when you seek, when you want power, human beings will tell you you have to take the means to have power, which is nothing wrong with it if it's halal. But the essence of uh, the ubudiyah and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to be the strongest person ever, then seek that power from the creator of the heavens and the earth and deny any form of power that is related to your own self. Because the one that would give it to you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more you feel that you have no power and you have no might except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more the person gains strength. And when the heart is strong, then it's easy for the physical body to do whatever. Uh, many of us and many people would send questions, and this is actually a sign of a healthy environment. That's why when, when we talk about your questions and your comments, and sometimes or many times we see these types of things in the comments uh, of many Muslims, uh, a healthy way to see that is when, when people ask, how can I please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I be steadfast on the deen of Allah? How can I enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, this is the healthy uh, signs of good questions that when we ask ourselves these types of questions because we sincerely want to be steadfast on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when uh, many of these questions comes into this category, how can I uh, protect myself from the sins that are everywhere? It's so easy now to commit sins. The environments that we live in, uh, the phones, the internet, the relationships, whatever there is, sins everywhere. No matter where a person goes, there are sins everywhere. So how can we protect ourselves from the effects of these sins? The most important thing is to gain that strength in the heart uh, 
and the strength in the heart is to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Aziz the one that is never defeated the almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala when we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the sins and from our weaknesses and so on that person is really gaining the strength the proper strength from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we see that in our uh, life that we live in where people when they feel weak about something and the first thing that they would take is to strengthen their hearts if a person has the ambition and has the zeal to do something he would find it very easy for that person to do whatever uh, you know means to implement what he's seeking uh, if a person wants to study something and he loves what he study he has the passion for it the person will take the means and he can excel if a person you know even when standing to talk with someone that you um, you know love or and enjoy talking with right as i mentioned this example before but it's a good one sometimes you would find brothers outside the masjid standing for a long time talking to each other but when the imam makes the salah a little bit longer people will become tired and bored and why the salah is long and so on when you already stood outside of the masjid or in the masjid to talk for maybe half an hour or more why is that because really it's not the foot that is carrying us the hearts are carrying us too when you're standing enjoying what you're doing you don't feel the pain in your foot and this is something we see practically in our life the prophet he would stand in the salah till his foot will swell والسلام, and he would say shouldn't I be a grateful slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do we think that the Prophet وسلم, was in so much physical pain standing in the salah the long night prayer and suffering and can't wait till the salah is, fin is finished and so on of course not the Prophet وسلم, would say that the jewel and the comfort of my eyes was made in the salah so what was carrying the foot of the Prophet ﷺ is really the heart when it's purified, when it's in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll continue inshallah ta'ala after the break and with the question of last episode and the new question for this one inshallah ta'ala and with your comments after the break. So please stay with us. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu wa rasulullah. Welcome back. And we're discussing verse number 26 in Surah Ali Imran in the subject of to purify our hearts, the gems of the heart, and how to do that with the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, in this verse, uh, part of the series that talks about the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a way to purify our hearts, which is a mandatory thing really for each and every one of us. Uh, some of the comments that uh, we received uh, from the Facebook page, mashallah, uh, you know, um, some uh, of the brothers and the sisters they um, are uh, mentioning some things like for example um, uh, Isma Im uh, says evil has a purpose uh, it helps to train our trust and steadfastness and that's a great statement here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he's the most wise uh, evil is there by the permission of Allah even though it's evil but it's there for a reason and the reason of it, as one of the reasons mentioned here, is to see how are we steadfast. If, if there is no evil, if there is no evil, how people know what is good? Uh, some, of the, some of the qualities of the believers would not show if there's no challenges. How would you be patient if there's no temptation? And the temptations and the whispers and the adorning of the evil by the evil, right? How would a person then be steadfast and, and, and be patient and so on and so forth? So this is a great point, of course. And also all good uh, is in the hands of Allah. All good, which is mentioned in the verse that we didn't talk about it yet. بِيَدِكَ khair. All of the khair, all of the good is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a part that is belief and part that is implication in our life. We have to be truthful. Whenever we say this, then it has to show in our speech and actions. Also we are in need to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This leads to peace of mind. The more we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we have peace in our hearts, which is a strong relationship. And uh, so this is all from, uh, you know, Ismail. And then we have uh, Samreen Iqbal uh, saying, uh, ac actually answering the question from uh, last week. And uh, this can be a good answer, mashallah. Allah mahfadni bil islami qa'iman. Wahfadni bil islami qa'idan. Waraqidan, although it's mentioned in uh, summarizing the dua uh, 
but it's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us in matters of religion, to protect our religion for us while we're standing, while we're sitting and so on. So this is a good answer, mashallah. And there are more also, specifically one that we say in the morning and in the evening. That the Prophet ﷺ ordered us and encouraged us. It's not an obligation, but it's a good thing for us to say it every morning and every evening. A beautiful dua from the Prophet ﷺ. And I really encourage everyone that if you don't have these duas memorized, get a book or an app of the authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and make sure that you have it with you, that you read these adhkar and these statements and the dua, authentic dua, that's the condition, authentic dua from the Prophet ﷺ, not made up or not invented dua, but authentic dua from the Prophet ﷺ that he would say in particular times. One of the important times that we should really sit and make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it doesn't have to be that you sit, you can be driving, you can be doing whatever, and make your adhkar after Fajr and before Maghrib. After Fajr and after Asr all the way to Maghrib. Very important adhkar that has great means to purify our hearts and these adhkar as you would see has nothing but the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is again the main reason and means for us to purify our hearts so reading from these authentic books and there are many of them Sahih al-Kalim al-Tayyib by Shaykh al-Sain Taymiyyah rahimahullah or the fortress of the Muslim or the like of these types of things that is compiled that has authentic hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what did the Prophet sallallahu used to say in the morning and in the evening what did the Prophet Sallallahu used to say when he would leave his house, when he would enter, before eating and after eating and so on? Authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu to uh, really give meaning to our life and to make our hearts purified constantly by the dhikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. There's also, uh, you know, and uh, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, reward uh, everyone and with the comments of you know, thanking Huda TV and so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all steadfast and accept our deeds and uh, really there's an the effort has to be done and we have to seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill and to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Uh, so again we're still with the question from last episode and still we have a new question for you this time inshallah ta'ala. We'll give the answer towards the end inshallah ta'ala. Uh, when it comes to here's some of the answers that you have uh, here inshallah. Um, um, now, these are general comments that we have in the, in the Facebook page. Um, when we talk about the verse, and we don't have really the time to mention all of what is mentioned in it, and the next verse also talks about some of the attributes of Allah. But you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that He gives honor and dignity to whoever He wills, and He takes it away from whoever to will. Right? All of that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ Right, such a powerful part of the verse that if we uh, really get the reality of it again it's a life changing really uh, meanings that has to be present in our hearts in your hands is the khayr by your hands is the khayr is the, khayr, is the goodness al khayr is all what is good every human being they want khayr they want good so who's the owner of all good Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all good Therefore, don't seek it from anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the khayr, to achieve it and to have it, is by being obedient to Allah. The Prophet والسلام, made it a rule. He said, You don't seek what's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we really want all the khayr and all the goodness to be in our lives, Right, we need to be obedient to Allah. And again, going back to some of the doubtful matters that people sometimes they think about it. When they see the khayr or the goodness with people that are sinners or disbelievers and so on and so forth. It's a lack of knowledge for a person to see that as khayr. As we said, what is khayr? What is goodness? If the outcome of it is an evil one. The khayr is when it's continuous. It's not just when you are 15 years old. Or when you, uh, you know, a certain, uh, you know, situation that you're in, you're given all kinds of goodness, but then the next day it's taken away from you. And the example that always comes in one's mind, if a person is told, and this is what the people of intellect would say, if you were told to go to that one beautiful place and do whatever you like, all kinds of delight will be in it. Things that you would even imagine. And you can do whatever you want to do, but then right after you finish, right, uh, 
your enemy will come and will cut you into pieces. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Would anybody, you know, enjoy these moments of whatever desires there is? Nobody will enjoy it. And nobody will even dare to go to such a place if that's the outcome of it, if that's what they're going to have afterwards. Nobody would do that. Right? It's the same thing. We're not sure what's the difference between that and to be clearly seeing this life versus the hereafter. This life is limited. 60, 70 years, some is 20, some is 10. Allah knows best. And then after that, it's an everlasting life. There's no comparison whatsoever. And when we give away the hereafter, which is an everlasting one, for something that is so short and temporary, and it's not going to be joyful anyway at all times, as far as the physical joy is concerned, then there's no comparison here. And that's why those who are wise, they would choose the everlasting one. So therefore, when people you know, talk about the believers or those who are steadfast of the deen of, on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they call them names, right? Who is the real fool on the face of earth? Are the people of wisdom those who would take from this life for the hereafter and the everlasting life? Or those who are trapped into their temporary desires and then afterwards they die and they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the regret would never benefit them? Who's the real wise? So the real wise is the really the one that knows the reality of this life versus the hereafter and to know the purpose of our life. And that's why there is nothing more virtuous and more precious in our life than to be steadfast on the deen of Allah. We will understand when, uh, when the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man tarak al-asra muta'amidan, faka'annama watira ahlahu wa mala. Whoever leaves salatul asr intentionally, as if he lost all of his wealth and all of his family. What uh, type of a disaster there is. A person's life will be totally misery whenever if he loses all of his wealth and all of his uh, family. This leaving salatul asr, one salah, intentionally, how many they leave Salat al-Asr and Salat al-Dhuhr and Salat al-Maghrib intentionally and they don't feel any misery or any concern and so on but the matter is coming unless we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the real understanding of things that's why the real again the real successful one is the one that get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes think of any khair or any goodness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things we believe in all of the attributes of Allah the way it's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. One of which as it's mentioned in the ayah, by the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khayr. The hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we live in it the way it is. Without distorting the meaning of it, without similarities or resemblance to the attributes of the human beings, and nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And al-khayr and goodness, with whatever this khayr is, all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he mentioned uh, two verses that really changes the lives of an individual one of which is that there is nothing whatsoever unless we have the treasures of it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring it down from it with a specific measure so the khaza'in the, the treasures of the heavens and the earth is all by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is the outcome of this what is the implication in your ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you know this? Don't ask anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't seek any goodness from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. You know, sometimes even when we teach our children, we should teach our children this. You know, the child always goes to his parents asking for things, right? Who's the one that created these parents to teach the children? Who's the one that can make the hearts of the parents uh, to give you or not to give you or who's the one that is the provider for the parents and for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowingly that sometimes when you're deprived of something in this life something materialistic not religion if you're deprived of the religion and the truth and the sweetness of al iman that's the real deprivation this is the real loss but if a person is deprived of something in this life health wealth whatever the relationships you know, if a person is deprived of something in this life, it's not really being deprived. This is a given. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given, giving the believers something. Something for them to worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala by depriving them of something. For them to be patient. So when a believer is facing trials in his life, 
with patience, with being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that person is deprived or he's been given a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That person is given a great favor from Allah. Why? Because he faced these trials with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him and that's why he tested him so that he would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these acts of worship. So he's been given, he's not been deprived. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. Some people are very poor, some people are very rich. And the matter is all according to one's iman and one's faith and one's obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And uh, th th this is something that we have. The religion, as someone is saying, simple words, yes, simple words. This is how the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that fits the, the nature of every single human being. This is the message of the Quran. Everything is very simple and straightforward. And there's no contradiction in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes, everything would fall in place. We won't be confused on the face of earth. People are confused because they have the lack of, of knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, so they will become terrified. They ask why whatever is happening is happening. Why the situations of the Muslim today? Even furthermore, some of the Muslims, they would even leave the deen because of the weaknesses or the situation that the Muslims are in today. Or they would have bad expectations of Allah. Or they would stay away from being steadfast on the deen of Allah. Why? Because they see that the Muslims are weak. Who said that this is part of the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you're weak physically, that means you're not on the truth. This has nothing to do with the truth. This is even the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read the Quran. See the stories of the nations before and how they were tested and how they were affected in this life because of their sins. Sins is the effect. And this is the most fearful thing in our life is when we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we truly seek the khayr and the goodness from Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all khayr. So it's all uh, facts and names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has to show in our lives and speech and actions and would put things in the right, right perspective what is obligation, what is recommended to stay away from what displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on that's why the verse ends with another attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on all things competent He's able to do all things and that brings the peace and the tranquility in the hearts of the believers after all has been mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things he subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to change your situation immediately whatever suffering that you're going through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to stop it immediately why it's still going Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise it's not because it's difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we said it's important to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, right? And that's why the happiness is in the hearts and it's not something that is physical. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the companions radiallahu anhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if Allah will, he will give you victory over your enemies. As simple as that. Immediate victory without any struggle or anything but then the next words of the Quran says but rather so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test you with one another we are living a life of test we are being tested you are a test for others the believers are tests for the disbelievers and the disbelievers are tests for the believers we are tests to one another we are attached to our own families and the same thing for the family to us and our children and our families and so on. So life is not going to be according to what we as human beings like and desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. And we are nothing but slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And being slaves of Allah, that means we have to, basically, we have only one job on the face of earth. And that is to be obedient to Allah and to follow the way of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as uh, someone mentioned here, uh, Nashad or so, that we are, I'm not, forgive me if I'm not saying the word, pronouncing the, the name uh, correctly, that every Muslim must be an ambassador of Islam, right? Which means we, we're, we're presenting the deen in our actions and speech and so on. Not to show off, but this is our duty on the face of earth. And that's why this is one ummah together. You go to the east or the west, you go anywhere there is a Muslim. Right? We're supposed to have 
one way and one way only and that is the way of the Prophet even if there is some differences of opinions and matters it doesn't disunite uh, the Ummah of the Prophet but rather they are united with matters of faith with being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be steadfast on the deen of Allah so this is with the verse number 26 in Surah Ali Imran how many names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is now the new question for this episode right how many names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can understand from this verse verse number 26 in Surah Ali Imran it doesn't have to be that the names are mentioned there but there are attributes there that refers to some of the names of Allah the names of Allah we do not say that these are names unless it's clearly mentioned that it's a name of Allah not the attribute attributes are far more than the names the names are clearly mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that there are names so some of these names are attributes of it is mentioned in the verse what are these names in verse number 26 in Surah Ali Imran the answer to this question to this question inshallah ta'ala will be after uh, the Eid, Eid al-Adha after the Hajj inshallah ta'ala because we'll uh, stop airing live this program for the period of the Eid inshallah ta'ala from now till uh, after the Eid after the four days of Eid inshallah ta'ala we'll come back after Hajj inshallah ta'ala and have the live program by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we'll answer the question then and till then inshallah ta'ala we have by the way since this is a very important time we're about to face the first 10 days of the Hijjah, which is the most virtuous days ever, as the Prophet ﷺ said. The deeds in it is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than anything else. Even the jihad fighting for the sake of Allah, as the Prophet ﷺ was asked, he said, even fighting for the sake of Allah, that means to do the good deeds in the first 10 days of the Hijjah is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than even fighting for the sake of Allah, except one case, a man that left his home with his self and his wealth and he did not return with any of this so this is a great opportunity to focus on the good deeds and to purify our hearts with the good deeds and that's one of the important means to purify our hearts with fasting with giving charity with reading quran with making dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to prepare ourselves by making dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah guide us and help us because again as we said we have no power we have no might we have no means to do anything. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will for us not to worship Him and not to do the good deeds in the first 10 days of the Hijjah, we won't be able to do it unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And that's the effect of learning the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we have this Iman in our hearts, then we'll humbly request and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah guide us, oh Allah make it easy for us. Uh, like the dua of the Prophet وسلم, to Mu'adh radiallahu anhu Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik oh Allah help me and guide me to make remembrance to you O oh Allah and to uh, worship you in the most perfect way and to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how can we rectify our hearts through uh, you know, our behavior it has a great effect, direct effect as uh, some asked our behavior, what you say to others, the good manners, affect the hearts either positively or negatively according, again, the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And a person can surpass and become in, the, in one of the highest levels, not by too much of fasting and optional salah and so on, but rather with the good manners that a person would have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also with others. It's the entire deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to hold fast to it and it's by the help of Allah, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really the real joy is to be a Muslim on the face of earth. And uh, different than might some, some people might think, because they're trapped into the materialistic things of this life. They're trapped into the ways of the shayateen and the devils. But for those who read Quran and see the truth, it's a real joy to whatever face, whatever situations that we're in, as long as you're a Muslim, as long as you're steadfast on the deen of Allah, you should really enjoy this life. Enjoy the life of being steadfast, the life of being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa So again, don't forget the question uh, for next time, inshallah ta'ala, after Hajj time, after the Eid. And that is in verse number 26 in Surah Ali Imran. There is uh, some of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can be deduced, not deduced, but it's, it's basically the attributes mentioned these uh, names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you see the question, how many names of Allah are mentioned in verse number 26 from Surah Al-Imran. So till then, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 
uh, to make us all steadfast on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to increase our iman and to accept the deeds of those who are going for hajj and to make it easy for them and also to give those who are not going for hajj the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh